G'day my friends, Marty Weir here from the Marty's Garden Show and today I've got a really cool video for you because it's part 3, video 3 for the Urban Outdoor Worm Farm Project. Now this is a series that I'm creating and if you watched the last video you would have seen that my worms did not die after the release that they've scattered around and they're sort of finding their way into new homes. Now I've still got some problems coming up because I need more worm castings, I need more compost, and I need more worms. So, this is what we're doing guys. We're talking about the issues that are coming up for my windrows and with worms and how to take care of your worms much better. Keeping up worm populations coming up in this video right now. Subscribe to watch more videos about compost worms, organic gardening, and growing the best, freshest food at home. And remember to click that bell button in the subscribe area so you don't miss any of my videos. In my last video, you would have heard me talk about the windrows being too hot and how I need to cool them down to keep up worm populations. Well, what I've done is I've decided to dig some trenches and flatten them out a bit more to allow more airflow through each row. So my next issue of keeping my worms nice and moist and cool is water, see? Water retention. Now, if I don't get this right, then the worms will just shrivel up and die because they need to stay nice and damp. They don't like to be overly wet. They actually will rise to the surface and leave if places flood and things like that. So I don't want them scattering and leaving. But I've got to keep these worm farms nice and moist so they move around and feel comfortable and have a perfect habitat. So one of my issues was I found that the cardboard on the hot days was drying out underneath the shade cloth. And then when I was watering it, it was just running off the sides and all the water was going down to the edges and it wasn't seeping through because we're still getting some hot days here. So what Karen and I had to do, we got together, pulled the wheelbarrow out and started ripping all those pieces up so we could fluff it all up, put it back underneath the shade cloth and so when the water hits it, it'll run off all little angles and go down and penetrate down below and leave perfect breeding areas for the populations to increase. Now ants in my worm farms and compost could be a real problem. I've never dealt with these in huge numbers like this and these guys they're super intelligent and they love to eat meat, right? So they're, they're full on carnivores. And as I speak, they're, they're getting all over my all over my camera and starting to get on me, these tiny little black ants. I'm going to get out of here, but I'm going to sort this out for sure. So those ants are going to be a real problem, right, guys? And I think we're going to have to look at that in a future update in this series and work out how to keep them at bay. I know I'm never going to get rid of them, but I really don't want those nasty little carnivores ruining my system and slowing up the amount of worms that I have in there. I've also got the odd magpie hanging around, cruising around, and he's hunting and grabbing a few, but I think the ants would actually do more damage. So what I'm doing is I'm working on getting the habitat right, guys. If I can get the cardboard in there like you saw with me and Karen fluffing it all up more and scrunching it all up so the water will go through and creating a place where they can get up there, they can lay more eggs and enjoy that area, keep more cool if it's all fluffy and stuff, it's going to create more pockets of air and keep it cooler down below as well. I even hear stories that they may rub up against cardboard and newspaper to get their eggs off. Maybe they do that in the wild against like sticks bark, leaves, things like that. Guys got any ideas about that? Let me know in the comments box down below. So it's 4.30 in the afternoon here and it didn't get as hot as it was supposed to because it's been cloudy most of the day. But what I want to do is look, I've got these jute bags now underneath with the hessian. And I want to see how well they're doing underneath this material here. Let's have a look underneath this newspaper. Oh, look at that. They're obviously getting together there and enjoying their company. We'll put that back over there. And see if they're under this area as well. You can see a couple more here. So let's lift up this part of the newspaper here. I mean the jute here. Okay, so we need to lay down more newspaper underneath that area. So to keep up worm populations, we need to look at these four elements. Habitat, temperature, moisture, and food. Now, habitat is super important because 
These guys, they need to go somewhere to regulate their temperature. If it gets really hot, they need to dive down deep into that compost, get cool again or get warm again. Now you can do that providing a very good compost such as mushroom compost in your worm bins or outside in the windrows. Now temperature, again temperature is really important and that's got a lot to do with moisture and food and the breaking down of the compost. Now if the compost is still very young, it's gonna get hot and these guys are gonna to get too hot. They like to be like us. They don't like too much heat. If we're too hot, they're too hot, believe you and me. So they like up to around about Australian, the red wiggler, I think 28 degrees, something like that, which I think is about 75 in US temperatures. Uh, let me know in the comments box down below because I'd like to know more about that. Right, moisture is really important. So the moisture, we need to be careful not to hit them too much with chemical water such as chlorine and fluorides and things like that. Now if you've got a worm farm, plastic one, you're putting water through, get the water out of the bin, actually into a bin or something like that, and it sit for about a day or two, and then use that and all the chlorine will have dissipated out of it. When you're using a hose, I find that it doesn't seem to affect it so much if it's got to run through some wood chip and different stuff like that, but I wouldn't overdo it. It's one of the problems that I'm still looking at on my place because my place is heavily chlorinated. Now I've got the bins outside for the plastic worm farms and I am using the similar water out on the windrows but occasionally I am spraying with the hose. Now the next one is food, right? Food is really important yet again. As I said, it controls temperature. Too much food can make it too hot and bring on the composting process and heat up the farm. And if you're putting too much food, it can also bring in nasty little bugs and things like that. And if you're not giving the right food, they're not gonna stay healthy because you need food such as the grit for their guts. So a bit of eggshell, a bit of coffee grounds, uh, maybe even like a bit of sand or a bit of dirt, stuff like that with their food. So food is really important and high protein foods will make them lay more eggs. Now they love lots of sweet stuff. As we know, they've got a bit of a sweet tooth. Anyway, look, I'm Marty Ware from Marty's Garden. There's lots more videos coming up on this series about my outdoor worm farming system. And you're gonna watch them here, right on the Marty's Garden Show. And more worm farming organic videos coming up about how I garden at home and how you guys can grow more food at home too. Have a great day, happy gardening. Click on the videos here and here and the subscribe button here so you don't miss out on any more videos. Click that bell button and I'll see you in the next video real soon. Bye for now. Open Outdoor Worm Farm Project Series. Don't miss it guys, subscribe now.